What's going on? What's up, man? How you doing? I'm chilling. I'm good, man. I'm glad I got I got in. Yeah, no, I've just been really busy lately with work and everything. So I had to push back a couple of interviews. Thankfully, I could do today, though. Like I was what's called I was I had to do work, but I couldn't. I had to cancel last minute. So oh, what you working? Sure. What you doing? So basically, I do this thing. Do you know where you go to like events like weddings, 50th birthday parties, and all those baby showers? And yeah. you see like at like they're like servers. Okay. Yeah, that's what I do. I work in I'm a wedding DJ, so I get it. Oh, what oh that's what's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> pack up all the gear, set it up, break it down. That's the deal. That's the deal. And you also do uh casting still or what for uh Rocket League? Yeah, Rocket League Castle under Novanta. I'm that Liquipedia. If you're on that Liquipedia page, check it out. Uh, but that's kind of like interesting because most tournaments are on weekends. Oh and yeah. So I, I got really hot when there was no there was no weddings to go to. So now it's like this weird balancing game, you know? Like what can I do and stuff like that? Yeah, of course. Uh mm -hmm. let me start it off by saying welcome to the ghetto podcast. And I'm glad to have you on the show. And why don't you introduce yourself to my audience? Yeah, so that's Flobo Voice, man, <laughs> aka Flo Pito. Uh I do a lot of things. I'm not sure what we're gonna talk about, but I'm we can talk about video. anything. All right, uh wrestling ring <laughs> announcer, author, voice actor, uh caster her video games, personality. Uh, award-winning television presenter uh, a lot of things bro and you do a lot of shit <laughs> uh, yeah man you know i'm just kid from brooklyn maybe you know what i'm saying take on the world from brooklyn. so uh, where are you calling from today let's start off with that right now i'm in los angeles about three miles from lax i live across the street from sony pictures so there's a long line of people there daily to get oh. on uh, wheel of fortune you know i was yeah i was over there like two years ago back when i was in like eighth grade i was over there so that's mm -hmm. what's up yeah mm -hmm. it's fun over there why are you over there just like uh, it over there Grad school. I left. I left because oh. I wanted to be a filmmaker back then, like most people. I wanted to make movies, and so I got here out here. The same with me. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I thought it was a good idea, but you know what? It, it changed a bit because it was like, all right, cool, filmmaking. Then it was like editing. Then it was like writing. Then it was like whatever. I'm in front of the camera now, so props for doing it. But I came out here for that. Yeah. Have you done any like big like shows or movies for like voice acting or like how's that been going for you? So a lot of uh, audio dramas, uh, if you look on uh, Peppermint Winters or Mistletoe Road, I'm on that one. Uh, as far as like big brands like Fox and ESPN, that's really more on the post side, a post-production side. Um, I was a content creator for, for American Idol. Um, and now I used to also work for Afterbuzz before they went down with the pandemic. So I've been a little bit, not, not huge, I ain't famous yet. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I've done a couple of things. <clears throat> so you're basically like to sum up everything, you're like basically like a whole content creator if you want to say yeah i mean that's what it is now i mean what's what's a musician but a content creator you know what i'm saying what's <laughs> yeah. a comedian but a content creator but yeah that's, that's kind of what See, it was and yeah. like you almost remind me of like myself because like that's almost my dream to be a content creator and do like half the shit that you do it takes a lot of time man and there's a lot oh, of, of times a lot of months being like dang i, I still gotta go to work because it's <laughs> this ain't paying at all uh, <laughs> yeah but i would say I now it's starting start to come around a bit i think you, you pick a niche and you like it, and you do it long enough, people go, oh, you're the wrestling guy, which you usually get, or you're the comedian guy, or you're the Rocket League dude yeah. who's old <laughs> that still plays that game, you know? How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, how old do I look? How old do I sound for your listeners? Shit. Uh, shit. You don't want to offend me. Yeah, you don't offend me. All right. Um, uh, let's see. So you got the beard, but you got no hair, so <laughs> I'm going to go with <laughs> 40, 43. All right, well, I was 36 this year in June. <laughs> no, it's all good, man, because I had this face for a long time. So when I was, like, 19, people thought I was 36. See, when so I now... hear, like, old people, not old people, but, like, when you said old and it still plays Rocket League, I'm thinking, like, 40-something, not 30s at all. Well, I mean, I'm seeing a lot more older players, too, but when I first started, people were literally half my age. And that was surreal to have, like, 17-year-olds dunking on you. You're like, what? <laughs> you know yeah, they're all, like, my age, 16, 17. Yeah, just, like, just, just killing it. I'm just struggling at plat three, diamond one. Like, please, keep up. <laughs> you know, so. Did but you're ever, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you ever played Fortnite or no? I played Fortnite once. Basically, I jumped out of a plane, jumped out of a bus, and got shot in the head. And I was like, you know what? This Fuck ain't this for game. me, bro. <laughs> yeah, this, I rage quit so fast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing that's probably a good thing you never got into Fortnite because the amount of rage and just fucking tryhards during that game. Or oh, yeah. I finally got, before that, I was finally getting into Overwatch. But the thing is, like, it started to cool off a bit. No one's really about that anymore. Yeah. So I was like, yo, check Fortnite out. I'm like, all right. And it's a different game altogether. <laughs> I got so mad. <laughs> Overwatch is so 2013, 2014. I know, I know. <laughs> Back when BO2 and all the shit were a good day. Yeah. So uh, let me ask you this. What, like, when you were a kid, what inspired you to do all this shit, like consecration, being a caster, comedian, mm -hmm. voice actor, like everything? 
Well, I liked comedy to begin with. I used to stay up late and watch the Tonight Show and whatever. But as far as like content creation, I was a fat kid. And you're probably saying so. Uh, but <laughs> when 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 you're fat, people think you're lazy. And and so I made sure not to be the laziest person there. I made sure to be there on time or early. I made sure to do extra yeah. homework or whatever. And I think that's what kind of translates because there's times when you're exhausted, especially making content. Not even, not even making the content, promoting the content. So when you're like, I don't feel like doing this at all today, but you go, okay, who's going to do it for you? Don't be lazy. And that would keep pushing me to keep on trying new things. So yeah, definitely me being fat, loving Twinkies uh, made me loving uh, Twinkies. <laughs> I am today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god how long wait so basically but i mean with everything i feel like whenever you say like fat kid or something like that yeah. like i always think of like they're not getting into content creation i don't know why it's not it's not like a stereotype in my head but i always feel like that's never they always like just drink hella soda and they won't do any content you know well, what I mean? <laughs> that's what i think a, a lot of it happens with the stereotypes right so you're probably right i mean there's always a sort of truth and stereotypes but because i kept hearing that and back then back when i was a kid it wasn't called content creation it was just um what was it called tapping into your inner creativity uh but i started doing stuff like yeah. podcasting in my basement <laughs> i started painting or whatever when i was young because it was like can't no one tell me i'm not being busy because yeah there's a lot of people that didn't do th- gym class i came and did last i couldn't run you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, so, I so i would write jokes and i would do sketches and all that kind of stuff in there just to be like yo i could contribute to you don't fail me see <laughs> so you've been doing comedy ever since you were like 10 I, mean, I would say I'd be telling know. jokes as then. I think officially as a comedian it was 2014. That's when I got on a stage in a comedy club in Los Angeles and told jokes for crowds. I think that's when I started counting it for me. But yeah, I was always a class clown because like, I'm, this is before like, Again, I, I was a 90s kid, right? So this is before. Oh, I love like, the 90s. Yeah, <laughs> baby. Shit, you, either either if you were yeah. smart, you were special. If you weren't, you were a special ed. And there was no like gifted. There was no like medication. So my problem was I used to work so fast. I would go back and talk jokes with the kids. Oh, yeah. And, and my mom was like, you can't be doing that. So she would take me to extra classes on weekends. So I became like the smart brother, <laughs> you know, just, yeah, just doing all this stuff. But I bet if I had kids now and they were they were doing the way they do, they probably put them in a different class, a different school. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I would think different else. classes, yeah. like the higher class or the highest of the highest of the, like the classes, like AP or some some shit like mm-hmm. that. Honors. Man, AP AP was around when I was in high school. Vanguard came in after I left. So like that was AP, Vanguard. Vanguard AB, you know, or into, oh or, yeah, yeah, the top of the shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I came way after um I got it so. Oh, so wait, so let me ask you this before we keep on talking about it. What is your, like, favorite music from the 90s? Uh, pop is the first one that comes to my mind, man. But, like, I, I remember how cool EDM was back then. Like, the, the, the New York house. Because it was just, like, it was so specific. I always had this ice cream truck that played KTU up <laughs> here in New York. And I just figured, I hear house music. I'm thinking ice cream. So oh, <laughs> that ice kid, cream. right? <laughs> so I just, I, yeah, I just hear about that. Jocelyn Enriquez or Al, a DJ or like Hadaway. Those guys from the mid nineties, like dance scene is what I remember most about the nineties. But yeah, as far really. as me growing up, I'm a hip hop kid, man. My parents, my parents Love came to country in the 70s, but I'm a hip hop kid for real. Yeah. Nineties hip hop is probably one of my like favorite music of all like centuries or like decades and all that. Yeah. Let me uh name you some people. Actually, I got a playlist. So, do you like House of Pain? Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's, that's a deep cut, brother. Are you sure you you sure you're a teenager? <laughs> yeah, I'm, all, I'm only sixteen, man. I'm just a junior. I'm only all right, 16. man. House of Pain. All right, hit me. <laughs> um, wait. Let me get on my playlist right now. Give me a second. <laughs> right. Yeah, how, uh, you got crisscross. You like them? Okay, yeah. I remember when I was a kid, that was hot. The jump, 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 yeah, jump, jump. jump yeah. Yeah. Every birthday party, every seven-year-old, eight-year-old birthday party, it was jump, jump. And they were like the fucking bounty castle or some shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't ask how I know. I wasn't even alive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah you're right. Discovery Zone. We were in Chuck E. Cheese kids. We were in the Discovery Zone. <laughs> I'd never really been to Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> uh, Snow? You know, uh, um, the Informer. Informer? The, yeah, the Informer. yeah, he was yeah. in that song, uh, Con Calma, right, with Daddy Yankee. Yeah, I don't really yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, but they found him. And then he was in the video. I'm like, yo, you found oh, really? Snow? Yeah, he's in the video. I was like, yo. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was chilling somewhere. Yeah, I got two <laughs> good songs and two uh, good art. Um, Wu-Tang Clan, Cream. Okay. Best okay, song yeah. out there. Yeah. And then you got um, Naughty by Nature, OPP. That, I, I play that one at weddings. <laughs> oh, I love OPP. <laughs> but I, didn't, I didn't even find you at some weddings, man. <laughs> Bro, yeah, these, man, come through. Where I work at, like some of these DJs are absolute shit. They don't play any good music. 
Oh yeah, you know what it is? It's people want to be safe. So like, this is getting to the whole DJ game out here in California. Yeah, if you're if, more of those. if you're a wedding DJ, you could do enough weddings to get an idea what would hit. Like, there's certain songs that are like good for couples, and there's certain songs that are good overall. So when you don't want to listen to new music, if you just kind of like you know what works, you can end up. And it's happened to me sometimes too, playing the greatest hits of five, ten years ago, or playing all the cheesy hits. So well, I made a point when I have my clients sit down, I'm like, okay, what artists and genres you like, which ones you don't, no matter how crazy they were it was my job then to make sure i have a musical bridge from the bangers to what they want and i think that's why i get to charge what i charge so i get to work where i work because couples appreciate that but it's Everyone. very simple to show up and be like all right i'm gonna play i'm gonna play the the, the, the cupid shuffle i'm gonna play uh you know what i'm saying electric slide yeah, yeah. and i'm gonna do cake by the ocean peace <laughs> <laughs> like, the most generic shit i've ever yes. seen at every single wedding bro yeah because no one's gonna get mad yeah no yeah, one's yeah. get offended yeah. see but at the same time but you gotta play some of those songs though that like not people like not trying to offend other people but at the same time make sure like the party and everything is getting hyped and having a great time oh yeah there's no bad song well it, we're clean music you get one's words there's no bad song there's bad timing so if you go to the dance floor is now open and you put miss new booty on it's like bro yeah what the I, fuck is it it's 5 30 in the afternoon what are you doing and at the same yeah. time i tell you this last saturday i was i was i was in the mix it was like 11 o'clock at night last half hour to go and this old lady i felt so sad for her she goes excuse me sir can you play la bamba and you're like i can't <laughs> Yo, it's yeah o'clock. i can't <laughs> Yo, that time is gone you know what i'm saying like yeah so, where do you dj in Some california was- yeah, so I'm also known as a mobile DJ, which means I come yeah. to you. So I live in oh. LA. I'll go as far east as the Arizona border, as far south as the Mexican border, and as far north as this town called San Luis Obispo. So that's about a good 200 mile range around. So I basically I have all my gear in my car, and it's all insured. I drive out. I set up for your wedding. Oh, you do road trips? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I, I thought you there. fly. Oh shit. Uh, no, no. Well, I the one time I got well, the one time I flew for a wedding, I got a gig in Italy. So I had to call someone in Italy with their stuff and then fly out with my laptop and just jack into their stuff. But usually it's just me driving around, man, with my own stuff, man, because that's what you've got people pay for, you know, that mobile DJ experience. Have you been in uh, New York recently? Uh, last time I bit was uh, August 19th. I recorded my last comedy special called 10,000 Life Coaches because my family's still out there. And my mom uh-huh. and my dad are old. They're like in their, they're older. If I'm older. older <laughs> uh, they're in their 70s. So they don't, uh-huh. they don't travel as much. This is before the pandemic. So I made sure to do shows. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can yeah, over there in New York and stuff. Yeah. What part well, of New York? Uh, Brooklyn. I'm from Flatlands specifically. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Flatlands. It's a neighborhood that doesn't get, really get its own little play, but it's like it borders like more famous neighborhoods like Marine Park, Flatbush, uh, Canarsie, all those places. Yeah, this is uh, flying yeah. over my head. I'm going to be honest. Uh, no Kings clue. Plaza? You been to Kings Plaza? No, even from though I'm the, from Jersey, I don't even know where you're Oh, you're from uh, Jersey. Yeah, Never mind. Yeah, that from New York. Okay, yeah. So I live at cool. Kings Plaza off, off 11 and off the Belt Parkway. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've heard of the Belt Parkway. I've been yeah, on that before. Cause yeah. Exit 11 I, North. Yeah. I'm from, I'm not even that far from there. I'm Central Jersey. I'm not North or South. I'm just Central. Right in the oh, dead center. What part? Like Hamilton or? Uh, yeah, like 20 minutes from Hamilton. Okay, my, my buddy I went to high school with actually bought the Stewarts in Hamilton. That's oh, really? I, like, I want to go out there and check them out. Yeah, my, my buddy Jimmy. Jimmy yeah. Payhan. Yeah, he bought yeah, the, like, the Stewarts. Yeah, I'm like 20, 25 minutes away from there. I'm not that okay. far, honestly. Was, respect. Yes. So uh, let's talk more about uh, the casting in Rocket League and all this. Yeah. On how, uh, like, have you ever been to any, like, LAN events or anything like that? No, and that's funny you said that, because, like, I used to play Rocket League, like, just to get the stress out, you know what I'm saying? I was self-employed from, like, 2017, and it was hard to come by work. Oh, that's what's up. So every time I get stressed out, I go, look, man, next 50 minutes, I'm going to play some Rocket League, because the games are super (laughs) quick. It was really with the pandemic, when shit shit shut down, um, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I joined this senior league, which is basically guys over the age of 30. Damn. In the games. That's what I you know. consider seniors? Yeah, oh. yeah. It, it was Senior Series Esports <laughs> on Facebook. Check it out. Uh, and they had their first ever tournament. <laughs> And I said, look, I do comedy. Can I just do some jokes over the game? Like, you know, oh, pick up the pace, grandpa. Or yeah. like, pick your sleeping pills or whatever. So I did that. And people came to me inside and was like, bro, you, you're great. You should be a caster. I'm like, I don't know what the hell that is. Yeah, and, I can, and, I, and I don't know, dude, I had a MacBook Air. I had the onboard camera. I didn't even know how to work Discord. And I was like, I don't know what this is. And that, the entire pandemic was like, learning discord getting upgrading my computer upgrading my camera like it became like this iron man montage of shit yeah, i just yeah, tried yeah. to add it on to my set and started doing it because not people i mean people who cast look like me 
it come from professional wrestling. So I can be like, oh, what's going through is my, what a move. You know what I mean? Like I can get hype if need be. And so I picked the name, uh, I picked Novanta, which is the, the Italian word for 90, because I heard of it at word when I was in Italy for that wedding I just told you about. And I've just been off to the races, man. I mean, I haven't done lands yet. That's coming up soon, but I've been working with video on studios. They do the video programming for MLE and stuff. They want to do a land. And uh, some of the guys I work with at RLCS, I've done RLCS Sam region. So that's like South America and Brazil. So hopefully I get to do some NA stuff and we'll put my name on the on the map there. Yeah, of course. NA is probably like the biggest thing for all this mm-hmm. Rocket League stuff and all that. So let's talk more also about pro wrestling. How did you get into that? Born and raised, man. I, again, being from New York, the home organization is the World Wrestling Federation. So I used to watch all the time. That's what my parents would say. If you finish your homework early, you get to watch more of it. You know what I'm saying? But um, I actually wrote about this in my book. When I, I came out here in 2007 in California, I had this dream of being a ring announcer. And so in 2010, SummerSlam was in town. I went to see SummerSlam, oh. and there was a guy giving out flyers for his own local promotion. So I hit him up. I go, yo, you need a ring announcer? And he goes like, yeah, 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 sure, sure. Come through when you want, kid. And I went to his weekly show for three months. Like, yo, remember me? You said. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and at the fourth month, he's like, okay, fine, man. Just, all right, just do it and be done. And so I did it because I got the opportunity to do it. And they're like, yo, can you get back next week? I go, yeah, because I can prove I'm consistent. Yeah. So, yes, you're, pers- you're persistent in not giving up. But I was consistent because I was there early every single week, whether you used me or not. And I got into ring announcing that way. And, you know, wrestling is kind of like a family. So this guy knows that guy. That guy knows that girl. And I was doing shows all around Southern California. So 2010, 2011, I was in Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, NWA. I was in MLW. Um, M- M1W, Mach 1 Wrestling. So mm. it became from that thing there. And that kind of opened it up. So like I host podcasts. I'm, I have a show on Spotify now. I mean, Spotify has one of my shows where I talk about wrestling all week. It's oh, crazy. shit. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah. It's called Mac Mania. Check it out on the, on the Ringer Wrestling Network. Like, I get to be a pundit and say, this is great. This sucks because I think yeah. I loved when I was a kid. So, yeah, when I hear, like, pro wrestling, I thought you were, like, being a wrestler instead of, like, a like a side announcer. I just told you I was fat, bro. I can't <laughs> I can't be using hey. cardio. <laughs> you know my heart be so weak. No, I got you. No, I hear you. <laughs> I mean, how tall are you? Six foot. Uh, six foot at my heaviest, I was 375. So I was like size six extra large shirts, 56 weights Fucking pants. Hell. So I was a house. I wasn't going to move. I mean, that's good like, for WWE, but the running aspect is fucking awful. Yeah. Just get to the ring. I'm like, oh, yo, yo, <laughs> yeah. yo. Uh, yeah, I but yeah it was all ring announcing, commentary, uh, backstage interviewing, everything else to be as close to the action itself. So I'm learning how to fall on my butt. That's what I wanted to do. You still doing uh, like uh, announcing for WWE or not WWE, like wrestling? Uh, not doing much special announcing. No, I'm kind of moving over to the punditry, the commentary kind of thing, like the talking about the storylines and all that stuff. But my buddy, um, Jack Farmer, which we co-host on the same show together, he does it now too for Championship Wrestling from Hollywood and we share stories and all that. Oh, that's what's up. Uh, let's uh, talk about more about your podcast as well. Oh, which one? I got seven of them. Fuck yeah. <laughs> all right, um... I don't know which one you talking I mean, the wrestling one? I can do that one uh any of them honestly uh, i didn't know you okay. had seven of them yeah the okay room. okay yeah dude i have a lot because the pandemic bro like i was a stand-up comedian with no comedy clubs to go to so it was like what are we gonna do with all this time really? yeah, you you see, know, there's no why, weddings <laughs> yeah that's why i wish i started this podcast in during like the pandemic like the main heart of pandemic and all that social media shit but i just sat on my ass and barely went outside because of the pandemic you just won't do didn't, that you i didn't take yeah i didn't take advantage of doing all this content creation which i personally love and doing and enjoying yeah, you know what? I think it's actually better for you because there's so many people that started the same time I did, and it's like, oh, the world's back. And it's, oh, yeah, know, yeah. Just crumbled it up and threw it away. But at the but, same uh, time, I'm still 16 at the end of the day. So I still got a head, like, hell of time. Yeah, the idea is that you want to be able to craft your image, man. So if you people look you up on Google and you have stuff going back five, 10 years, you're golden. Oh, yeah, of uh, course. Yeah. So I have a bunch of podcasts, but let me start with the Spotify one first because that's the one people see more yeah, of. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, the Ringer, which is owned by like Bill Simmons and all that jazz, or Spotify, they had bought WWE's rights to their all their podcasts, and they have their own originals now. And one of the shows is called Mac Mania with a friend, friends of mine, Evan Mac, obviously, and Jack Farmer host this weekly best of wrestling type show. And that's on Tuesdays on the Ringer Network. That's cool because that could say I'm a professional podcaster, and I got doing that by you doing thought, this. Yeah, that title now. Yeah, I'm a professional <laughs> podcast. I get that doing this. But before that, I had um, so many different podcasts. I have one like this one where I talk to cool people. Uh, I assume I'm cool. Cool people, <laughs> artists, creatives. That's called New Amsterdam Radio. That's K N E W 
Amsterdam Radio. That airs Thursdays. I have a Monday night live stream late night comedy show like Jimmy Fallon. That's called What's Up Flobo After Hours. That's on Monday nights. I do a show called Flobo Saw on Netflix because I had a Netflix subscription and I want to write it off my taxes. <laughs> so I made a yeah. show about it. Uh, I have a Star Trek one called Commander's Log. Uh, and I also do one with professional wrestling outside of the one I other do with my friend Jack Farmer, same Jack Farmer, called Draped in Gold, where we review NXT UK in NXT. That one's at drapedingold.com. So there's a bunch of them, bro. Like, just Holy keep talking yeah. to people, yeah. <laughs> so you meet a lot of people almost every day of the week. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's this the part is fun. It's it's trying to book these people all the time is hard. But yeah, get to see the people that yeah. walk of life, what makes them tick. Yeah, you know? And, yeah, like, yeah. But, uh, sorry to cut you off and everything, but like the thing with like meeting people is the best part, recording and all that, putting it out, but just the booking part sometimes just gets very hectic. And like sometimes you might forget something and, you, and like the guests will just hit you up and be like, you forgot this interview. Like, and you just don't even realize because you're so busy and booked. Oh yeah, man. That's, that's the thing. Like calendar invites are important, but you're right. There's, there's so many people that, that would say, I can't make it, but give you an alternative date. People that don't show up. Like my Monday night show is live. And two times people have just not showed up. Sorry, can't make it. And it's like, but I'm live. What am I supposed to do? You know talk to I mean? myself. Yeah, talk to myself. I did that one time. And then my friend's like, yo, give me a link. I'll jump in. And he kind of saved my show. But yeah, it, it does have booking is the worst. Booking is the worst and promoting is the worst. Um, yeah, promoting can be a son of a bitch sometimes, honestly. Yeah. But, but the booking as aspect of like, I've been canceled on so many times. It's not even funny. Like, mm -hmm. I think like, two weeks ago, I was supposed to do uh, an episode like last Thursday because I do every like uh, episodes on Thursday. And uh, he just canceled last minute, like five minutes and never joined and never did anything. So I didn't have an episode for that week. I was like, ah, oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. And Always I have ones in hand, man. I just, I, it's kind of funny. I remember this from the movie Transporter, which doesn't really make sense, but I'll tell you why in a minute. Where um, Frank Martin, Jason Statham, get like his blood over his shirt. Yeah. And he goes to the back of the car and he has like a stack of like fresh shirts. And oh, so, shit. so I was like, yo, always have a backup plan. So when I have a guest on my live show, I have extra questions. I also have my crap, my live action, but then I go, what's pissing me off today? What's someone that I want to talk about? So I have something and that's something I had to learn myself because yeah, you're right. People go, oh, I'm, I'm definitely in bro. <laughs> oh, now, uh, just, yeah, I, oh, I don't yeah. want to, I don't want to trash this guy, but I had a guest on that I was trying to get on. I go, Hey man, can you do my show? Not this week. I'm out of town next week. All right, bro. How about now? Well, you know, I'm kind of tight. My birthday week. All right. How about now? Listen, can we do this on a day you don't even record? I'm like, then you don't want to be on the show. Like, yeah, it's wait, fine. Wait. It's fine. Like, it's it's cool. Don't just don't don't string me along. You know. Yeah, it's just annoying when they just lead you on for like months. Like it's been a like sometimes it can be months. It's mm -hmm. ins it's insane. Like you're not it's, Oprah. But what are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> it's annoying how people just do that shit sometimes. Honestly. Mm -hmm. So how long, you said you did your podcast since the pandemic only, or have you done it like before? So, um, most have started with the pandemic. So like um, Draped and Goals pandemic, or After Hours pandemic, all the Netflix stuff was, but New Amsterdam Radio, which to me is my own flagship, that was before. That was, I was in my car, I was telling, I was telling my audience about creative stories I saw in the news, like Elon Musk has a new cyber truck. Uh, how can you come up with new products for your own creative endeavor? Like one of those, like, you know, oh, Instagram yeah, yeah. wins type thing. But really when the pandemic started, that's when I got guests. My, my, my homegirl from high school called me up and she was like, yo, you got a podcast? I'm like, yeah. She goes, I'm your guest next week. And I'm like, I don't have guests. She goes, <laughs> okay. I was like, damn, <laughs> the, damn most this New York, the most New York way possible. I'm a yeah. guest. I'm like, all right. So I had to look up and figure out how to figure it out, which apps to use. Zoom wasn't around quite yet. It, it was around, oh, but no one yeah. knew it. Like I was using clean feeds, stream yard. It was this weird thing, but that kind of opened the door. So like that new Amsterdam was pre-pandemic. Most of the shows were just after. Yeah, of course. So what did you use before Zoom? Just Discord or something like that? No, I don't. That's what use, I was looking into. I, I don't even use Zoom. I use StreamYard. Because because no Streamyard does like this thing with the video, but it's browser based. Sometimes people get kind of freaked out about downloading the app of Zoom. Like, oh, I got an iPhone six. I don't want to have the app. I go look, uh, the app Safari. Click this link, and there's like a class. Streamyard is what I use. It's like Restream. It's also browser based. You just click a browser link, it opens up, and then you're fine. Um, but before that, I was using Clean Feed, which I agree has better audio, but there's no picture. So if you're somebody who's not a tech person, you're like, what <laughs> app am I on? And they got all confused and stuff like that. But so yeah, StreamYard is what I use day to day. Yeah, because I use both video and audio. So I feel like I had to narrow it down because I didn't, 
those names that are websites, whatever you just named, like I've never heard of them. So I. Oh yeah, yeah. Streamyard is my favorite. I'm an advocate for that one. But there's one yeah. called Melon. Melon's like that way too. Restream.io is like that one. Riverside.fm. These are all browser-based solutions. So when you get someone who's like traveling or in between things, they don't have to download anything else. Just click a link and she's good to go. See, because like my thing was like it was either between Discord and Zoom. So I was just like. I researched and I was like, Discord is ass. I already tried it and it's like, mm-hmm. eh, the video is decent. And then the audio was just fucking shot out. And I was like, I, this is not going to work. So let me go to Zoom and it's just been working out and everything. And I just been getting ideas and ideas and slowly been uh, getting in and just growing. So I'm 36 years old and I can tell you one thing. All of my friends think I'm making it up. I'm like, Discord, what's the point? I don't <laughs> get it. You know what I mean? Like it, it, So like Zoom has a very lower point of entry. Especially you like deal with famous people and, oh, their, yeah. and their handlers. Click this. <laughs> we find. Yeah, 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 that's what I I always send out the link and everything. But if they don't have the app, it's kind of fucked. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, so is there anything um you want to share like about like your professions, hobbies, or anything like that? Yeah. So your boy, uh, Flobito is what I call myself. <laughs> uh, I have a, a brand new book out. It's my seventh book, but my first memoir. It's called Graduation Day available on amazon.com. This one is really comes back to when I was in college. Uh, my commencement speaker was this random dude that worked at Walmart. I said, yo, yo this is not good helpful <laughs> advice. So each chapter talks about something that happened to me as an adult outside of school and the life lesson I learned, I apply it to an actual commencement speech at the end. Graduation day, F level boys available now on Amazon. Yes. You guys heard him go support it. And also this is like a segment that we do of like the podcast where I have all my guests do this, where they share a story from their teenage years. So if you uh, want to share any stories that you have, it could be anything of like you getting suspended from school, you uh, getting in a fight, you getting laid for the first time. You <laughs> Damn, I, I didn't live life at all of it. <laughs> you know, fights and getting laid. Dude, I got laid in my 20s, bro. That's the first thing I'll tell you. I, I waited, bro. I waited. Um, So as a teenager, <laughs> I had my own adventures, man, because, again, no one really messed with me because I was the biggest kid. I was the biggest kid in school. Uh, you play was, football? I played football for about right, two, 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 two weeks. And uh, <laughs> I, wanted, I, I wanted to quit the first day. And I, I can say this, right? This is like an X-rated show, R-rated show. Yeah, you can say it. All right, so we had training camp. <laughs> We had training. Okay, so before that, I told my mom I want to do football. And he, my mom was like, yo, even back then it was dangerous. And she only signed the form because she says, if you don't make it, for whatever reason, you have to do student government. And spoiler alert, it flopped. I did student government. But but the, the first day I was there in, in training camp, I was like, I'm done. I can't do this. Like, not only am I slow, I'm wearing all these pads. I'm like sweating. I smell like a moose. There ain't, there ain't nothing. I can't do it. I can't do it. And so at the same time, because school hasn't started yet, cheerleader camp was the other cross of the, the field. And we had student coaches. Oh, yeah. And so we were doing something called nutcrackers. Know what those are? never really heard no. basically you lay on your back uh head to like head like head to head to someone else like your legs are out in different directions yeah and they blow the whistle your job is to get up as fast oh, as you can, oh yeah turn. i saw that on some instagram video yeah I yeah, yeah, that. yeah yeah you turn and like, you tackle them yeah, so you do i mean you do 10 of those you're done but i'm like doing one and i'm just like <laughs> i was going to quit that day and the student coach was like hey hey boys what are you doing i'm like man i, I don't think i can do it he's like you see those cheerleaders over there you want one of them to suck your dick? <laughs> Go back and do it. And my brain was like, wait, girls can do that? I was like, okay. <laughs> and I went back and I do it. I finished the quickest I ever did. Had no idea that that was a thing. <laughs> Had no idea. I was 14 years old. I'm like, no. I, sucking- dude, I was so innocent, bro. I was like, oh, girls. <laughs> ah, you know what I mean? So that's, that's how I powered through, which was the story I had in my mind. But that's the one I told you. Me doing nutcrackers. <laughs> So when did you get your first girlfriend? Woo, 27. <laughs> I was 27 years old. And I'm not even lying to you, man, because it got to the point where I got rejected for so many times for being a fat kid that when I started losing the weight and girls saying, I think you're cute. I'm like, stop bullshitting. <laughs> stop oh, lying to me. Oh, <laughs> you know, you so I never sorry. give myself a chance. Yeah. Oh, so you used, to, you were used to being fat the whole time. Yeah, yeah, and, and and I do in my mind's eye, I'm still 300 pounds. It's only when you know I take a picture and people go, "Oh damn," or I buy a shirt and it goes medium or large. I go, "Oh damn," and that mental thing is really important. But yeah, an actual committed girlfriend, I was 27 years old, man, and I used to be embarrassed to say that, but now I'm like, "Who is it's fuck? true? It's yeah. true." Like, you know. So how were your college days? I'm so curious to hear this one. 
College days were a little weird because I was a narc. I was, a, I was an RA because to make the money. But I went down to a school called Flagler College um, in St. Augustine, which was 11,000 people. And I was like one of 25 people who were not white. So like I stuck out just for being myself. And uh -huh. well, in the South, having a person of authority not be a white person was always interesting. Uh, so uh, yep. grades wise, it was cool. 3.4 GPA, Miss Honors by a tenth of a point. Um, I think I did okay. I was a comm major. I was a broadcast film major, broadcast TV major, but it was a weird dynamic going from a, a tricet area where, yeah, we know people look different, but it was kind of like, you're an asshole, you're an yeah. asshole, ah, <laughs> to being like, oh, I hate you because you have a built-in suntan. Yeah. That shit was new to me. And so that was kind of like my, my experience out there, for real. I never heard that one, built in suntan. <laughs> Holy fuck, bro. It's true, man. So you never did any parties or anything in college? I tried, man. I had my first, my first RA took me out for my first drink. That's how much how sheltered I was, you know, but I didn't really do that because it was like, look, I'm in Florida, 2000 miles away from Brooklyn. My parents knew if I messed this up, I'm going right back to Brooklyn college. I didn't want to do that. So yeah, you're not trying so, to go there. I'm trying to go to Brooklyn college. Oh, Kingsboro? Nah, fam, yeah, no. I'm good. Fuck you know? that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you listen to my dad, that. man. <laughs> yeah, 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 fuck that. <laughs> yeah. Stay away. <laughs> no, back then we called it Brooklyn jail because everyone did time in that place, man. Kingsboro? No, thanks. Oh. <laughs> So, mm -hmm. so basically almost everybody you knew did time. Yeah. Everyone did time Kings, bro, for one class or a year or two years to get on their feet. I was like, I ain't doing that. So. Yeah. Fuck that. I'm not <laughs> trying to be part of that life. <laughs> right. Any more stories you got? That's it, man. You know me, I'm boring as hell. <laughs> uh, hey, <bro. laughs> See, I, I thought like, but you got any fat stories? Cause usually like those are oh, interesting. Pff, dude, you I must got, have I, some. I got a shit, but what do you want? Like fat dating stories or fat exercise <sighs> stories? Or like, I mean, it's, I was fat for like, a bunch. Oh, you know what? I'll tell you about my uh, surgery. How about that? I'll tell you that. Yeah, let's hear this. So I uh, I decided to go to the gym in two thousand February twenty six two thousand nine, um, okay, and that's the, I, that's like a mile I celebrate every year. You, you, either was something either really healthy or really, really like disgustingly not healthy. Yeah. So I lost a hundred and fifty pounds. Um, people always ask how I do that. I say the first eighty pounds was legitimately. I'm not even lying to you or making fun of. It was a subway diet. I went to subway twice a day for six days a week and just bought sandwiches. Uh, to, to eat healthier. Uh, but back then, Subways were $5 a foot long. Now it's like $10. So yeah, I don't, it's like, yeah. I, I don't recommend yeah. that now. But back yeah. then, they were $5 foot longs. So I lost 150 pounds. But the problem with that is I had so much excess skin. Like, like my oh, gut, my yeah. gut was like, it was like, a, I, I can hold my stomach in my hand, like a football. It was gross. Um, and so when I worked out, I used to wear this like really tight Under Armour shirt just to keep everything in like a girdle. Um, so it got to the point where I'm um, talking about sucking dick, right? I got to a point where like one time I was having sex with my girlfriend and it got in the way. I was like, I'm out. I can't do this. I got to get this cut off. So I went to the, I went to the the, um, the plastic surgeon, which is weird to say a kid from Brooklyn having a plastic surgeon. Yeah. But I went and I got the skin removed. So I wake up um, and the guy told me they removed six pounds of skin, just skin. Holy and I, he, had, he, he took pictures of it. I still have them somewhere. <laughs> I'm like, thanks, bro. But... The crazy thing about that is all that work of eating Subway sandwiches and working out and running and lifting weights, I woke up like a super, I woke up with abs. Yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah, it was like, cause it was like pulled tight. So I was like, holy, I have an ab cage. And that thing blew my mind. I thought somebody had CGI'd it on me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so the recovery was hard. And to this day now, when I want to pig out, I go, okay, pig out today. But if you lose them abs, that was your second yeah. chance at life, baby. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so you basically you woke up with just confidence, straight confidence, like you could fuck anybody. No, it, it's 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 surreal. You come out the shower like, oh shit, oh shit, I don't <laughs> got like, the six pounds of skin anymore. I don't, I'm gonna hold it like a football. You <laughs> know what I mean? Like it's it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. So you got any uh, fat um dating? I want to hear those fat dating ones. Yo, it, it's it's crazy now because like because like I, my whole dating experience was pushed back. My teenage years, I didn't really do nothing. My twenties, I didn't really do nothing. I'm in my mid thirties. No career record, no wife, no kids, two college degrees, and I'm making my own money. So I didn't know this, but no one cares what you look like. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so because the girls will holler at me all the time. And so I would show pictures of how it was before. And I realized now, I guess there's, there's a whole pendulum now that some girls like thick boys now. I didn't notice. And I'm like, yo, how is it? Really? I, get, I lose the weight now. Yeah. Like, they don't want like, like, like sitcom fat, but they want yeah. a little bit, a little bit of me, like how kind of like how we are. And I didn't know that. So like so many years in time, I go back almost like that movie Memento, like when girls were hollering at me, I was like, oh, she's trying to be nice. Yeah. 
walking away and shit. She's probably trying to hug her all at me. So it was a weird thing for me to learn in my mid thirties. Like, yo, there's different body types for everybody. Especially yeah. when you get older, things you used to care about, you don't care about anymore. Yeah, nobody you know gives a shit when you're older. Yeah, yeah. You get like as as everyone it, has cottage cheese. Everyone's yeah. old. You know what I'm saying? Like, as long as the fucking high school days and all that shit. That's when people care the most. Yeah, because there's no, there's no experience. It's almost like. His, okay, I'm going to open my heart for this, this. Yeah. And you realize you get hurt anyway at a time. You're like, look, man, do you have any crimes? All right, cool. You have all your teeth? All right. <laughs> I'll see yeah, you at Applebee's. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, it's basically <laughs> Applebee's. <laughs> Every high schooler, you want to go yeah. to Applebee's? You want to go yeah, to Taco yeah, Bell? <laughs> yo, let's, let's go. <laughs> Mickey D's. <laughs> Mickey D's. Yo, let me get you a Big Mac meal or some <laughs> shit like that. You know what's up, man? <laughs> yeah, of course. Room, romance. <laughs> <laughs> you got any other stories to share? Oh man, that's it, brother. So um, it's gonna be basically it for this episode. It's gonna wrap it up. So if you want to share anything else, just feel free to say it right now. You have anything? Yeah, man. Follow me on that Twitter at Flobo Boys. That's F L O B O B O Y C E. And please pick up a copy of Graduation Day available at Amazon.com. Put my name in there. Graduation Day, Flobo Boys. Let me know what you think. Yeah, I'll link all that shit in the description of the YouTube video. And also, please make sure to sub, like, and all do that fancy shit on YouTube. And if you guys are listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and all platforms, streamers, whatever, please go support and follow that. I would mean a lot. And also go support my boy, Flobo. I think that's how I pronounce it. Yeah. Let's go actually pronounce it right. Yeah. So that's going to wrap up this episode. And have a nice day, everybody. Peace out.